There is so much to unwrap as we wrap up this first week of the trial. Joining us live now with an anal analysis is Georgetown Law Lecturer Frederick Lawrence. Great having you here on the noon show again. Uh, now we have heard a lot of emotional testimony. It's clear that the witnesses are still traumatized by what they saw that day. How much damage did this do to the defense, especially that nine-year-old who testified and Chauvin's former supervisor? I think it did a lot of damage to, well, it did damage to the defense. The better way of looking at it is that how strong has the prosecution's case been? And I think it has been very strong. The defense has tried to achieve some things through cross-examination, but one of the things you got to remember, there none of the three charges against him involve intent to kill. This is not that kind of a murder case. Did he intend to do an assault? And if so, did a death result? That's the first charge, that's second degree murder. A third degree murder is that he behaved recklessly, dangerously to death result. Uh, and third, uh, third charge is manslaughter. So I think all of those charges were very strongly presented and have been very effectively presented by the prosecution this week. Okay, now the defense, it seems like they're trying to lay some blame with the angry crowd, which was really only a handful of people. In their opening statements, they also brought up drugs and Floyd's system and a heart condition, blaming that for his death. Are they finding any success? I don't think so. I think the problem is that what the, the, the trial is going to be about this defendant. What did he do? What did he know? What should he have known? I think when his former supervisor gets on the stand and says, this is what police practice is. He didn't follow police practice. That was incredibly damaging. And by the way, those of us involved uh, in law enforcement, I was an assistant U.S. attorney earlier in my career, know that standard police practice, you put somebody on the ground, you cuff him behind his back, and you make sure he can't move. Once you've done that, you, your, your job is done. The idea of keeping him in a chokehold at all, let alone for nine minutes, it, it, there's, there's no police practice that calls for that. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be hard to get past that fact for the defense. Let me ask you this, though. Have you seen any missteps with the prosecution's case so far? Not really. Uh, you know, when people watch the entire trial, one of the things they always find is that it's a little more plotting than they think it's going to be. They're used to watching trials on TV where you get the greatest hits, uh, you know, in a TV show that does the opening, the closing, and a couple of very dramatic moments of cross-examination. That's not what real trials are like. Uh, it's more, more like a marathon, not like a sprint. So we're watching that marathon, but they're laying it out. They've made that case. Think back to what they said in their opening. And have they pointed to each piece what they said in the opening? Because that's what they're going to do in their closing. They're going to come back and they're going to say, I made you promise. I told you we were going to prove all these things. Did we prove it beyond a reasonable doubt? I think so far, it, it looks very strong for the prosecution. Last question before I let you go. And we know that the other officers will eventually stand trial. How will the uh, effect and the outcome of this trial impact their cases and their trials? A great question. Obviously, every case is different. There's some particular aspects of each piece of it. But if there is a conviction, particularly if there's a conviction on all counts, I think those other officers sit down with their lawyers and they say, can we work out a plea agreement? So everybody's watching this, uh, particularly those other officers, because they know that they're next in the dock. All right. Dr. Lawrence, always great to have you on the show, sharing your expertise and your insight. We'll touch back with you in a week to wrap up this next week of trial. Thank you for your time. I but thank you.